Hi, my name is Clarence Powell, and I'll be your instructor for the next hour. Uh, welcome to MOTC, Ministry Online Training Center. Uh, this is my second hour on discipleship. And during the second hour, after the second hour, uh, you have to do a response paper, and the response paper be one page long. Uh, it, it, you'll answer two questions. What have I learned? And what am I going to do with what I learned? Those are the two questions. Uh, so we'll start off in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the people that are, that, that are, that are going, to, going to learn from this, this lesson. You know, you know who, who's here and, who, and what they need. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And we, 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 you'll just speak. I will, you will speak through my mouth. You know, and, uh, and, and, and be a blessing to the people. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, this is my second hour on discipleship. And where I left off was the principle of, of multiplication. Okay, and so I, I have a couple of more items that I want that I wanted to cover on the on the, the, the multiplication. And this is the multiplication of the disciples. You know, and uh, the principle of multiplication is a basic physical law of the universe. You know, humans, cattle, fish, flowers, trees, and even the microbiotics, micro cells, little small cells. Every growing thing operates on this principle of multiplication. And what it is, is like, you know, when, when a cell divides, it multiplies and you have two cells. And then the two cells divide, it multiplies and you have four cells. So, the, so that's, that's the way that uh, discipleship was, was, was designed to, to work. Okay, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it reads, and God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man, and have dominion, the vast service of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and man. Okay, well, I'm sorry, and, and, and man will have dominion. And, and over every other living creature that moves around the earth. Well, that was the first command that God, that God gave man in the garden. And uh, it included being fruitful and multiplying. And we know that that was, that was one of the, that was the command that that man definitely fulfilled because from two people, this whole world has evolved. You know, so, so, so multiplication does work, and that's how it was designed to work. It works like this numerically. If two parents have two children they may, and maintain the status quo, there is no population growth. There's zero population growth, okay? But if they have three children or more, then the multiplication starts, and then, and then those three, those children have children and children, and, and, and the multiplication, it, it just goes on. It works like this numerically. It, and, it, and it works like. Uh, The more, then the more the population will grow and it begins to multiply. The more children, faster the multiplication process. For some animals and fish, and for, for, for some animals 
and fish and plants, reproduction is costly because it means the death of, of the animal. And that's like the, uh, the sa salmon that, has, that, that, that goes up, up in the great north and, and they, have to swim the, they have to swim the river. And when they swim up the river into the mountainous area, they, 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 they birth there. Well, if a lot of them don't make it. Over half of them actually, actually die be before they get there. Well, it's the same thing with the, if, if you've ever been on the beach, when the grunion run, the grunion are uh, fish that, that, that come to shore and as these little fish come to shore, they, they come to shore to, uh, to, to drop their eggs. And as, they, and as they're dropping them, a lot of them you know, are, are killed. Uh, there's uh, a lot of other fish prey on them. So, 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 so that, that, that sacrifice is death in order to multiply. And then a lot of, you know, a lot of the, the fruit seeds, you know, a seed must die. In, in order for a, a plant to be to be uh, created, and then that plant that plant grows into a tree, and it, and, it, and it's thousands of thousands of, of, of fruits that are the return of for them. Uh, and John. Chapter 12, verse 24. That's John chapter 12, verse 24. And it reads, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more, but lives by itself alone, but if it dies, it reproduces many others and yields a rich harvest. You know, and, and as a saint, you know, we are, you know, we're instructed to, to die to self. And when you die to self, then that's a multiplication. That's a multiplication of, of, of the number of saints because you die and you become a saint. The, 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 key, the key to multiplication is quality. You know, the secret to the success of multiplying is the death of training. You know, and that's, and that's in, in, in multiplying spiritually, it's, it's the death of the training that that, that, that you receive. Each time one person fails to reproduce spiritually, you cut the results in half. Adolf Hitler's objective was the destruction of the Jewish, Jew, the Jewish race. But as determined as he was, he failed. And the reason he failed was, you know, and, and, and you, want, you want to ask why. And the reason he failed was the multiplication process had, had gone too far and, and it had, had lasted too long. Uh, if, he, if he had, if he had, he, he, he probably, he could have, he had a chance to stop it if he would have, no, you know, he never had a chance to stop it because, it, 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 like I said, it had gone too far and, and for too long. But the only chance that he would have had to stop it would have been if he would have been on the mountain with Abraham. And as soon as Isaac was born, figured out some, a way to kill him. Okay. Taking Isaac's life would have, would, could, could have, could have destroyed the Jewish race, race with that one death. But once the once the multiplication had started, and it had, it, and it had been over the years, you know, it, it wasn't an, you know, it wasn't an, an impossibility. 
that the Church of Jesus Christ seeks to explode through the multiplication, Satan, our enemy, is trying to slow us down. You know, and you, you, you say, well, you know, and, and that's Satan, Satan again is trying to slow down the multiplication of the saints. And he's done a decent, he's done, he, he's determined also, he's, he's, he's really determined. But uh, here again, the multiplication has already started and, and, and it had advanced to a point to where, to where he'll, he'll, he'll never do it. You know, he, he's, he's actually already a, de a defeated <coughs> foe. Mark 4:19 reads, and this is Mark chapter 4 verse 19, and it says, "Then the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the, of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the cravings and passionate desire for other things creep in choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless okay and then uh, in second second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 that's second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. It says, And the instructions which you have heard f from me alone with my witnesses transmit and entrust as they deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others. You know, and I was talking about the quality the quality of the message and that's and, and, and that's the quality of, of, of the gospel message you know but but the quality is 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 is, is the depth with which the lesson is taught and, and we have to teach that lesson that lesson has to be taught in, in, in depth now that was that was Paul uh, talking to his son Timothy you know, and, and Timothy had just just got into the ministry, and he was explaining to him the importance of the quality of the training. You know, of, of, of training disciples. You know, because because that because through that training, training converts to become disciples. Because through that training, you know, you, to leave a convert alone. You, you, you don't get the same results. You don't get the, the multiplication. I'm going to also read it uh, in another version. This is still Second Timothy chapter two, verse two, and it says, "The things which you, Timothy, have heard from me, Paul, in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these faith to entrust these to faithful men." So he, he's, he's saying, you know, give, give, give this information to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Multiplication is a slow process early. Early when it first starts, it is a slow process because it's, it's, it's a quality, it's the quality that, that you're going for and therefore, you know, you spend time making disciples, you know, in teaching. It is assured to be successful only when there is proper training of faithful people who carry the, the training process to another generation. So, you know, they keep training and then, then, they, then the disciples carry that training to another generation. Okay, it is also costly, for it is impossible to train 50 people at the same time. Disciples can't be mass produced, you know, because if you mass produce them, you know, you, you, the quality suffers. 
Now, I know you want to know, well, why can't disciples be mass produced? And uh, we're going to get to that. Jesus, our Lord God on earth, while on earth, not married, not working, and no weaknesses, devoted to his ministry, close, he was devoted to his ministry, he closely discipled 12. And out of the 12, you know, we, we, we know that one, one turned out to be Satan, and, and, and three really excelled, and the rest of them were, were uh, the rest of them were, were, were discipled properly, but that was in a, in a three-year period. Okay, and 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Verse 12 and 13 reads, verse 12 reads, Now when I arrived at Traos to preach the good news, the gospel of Christ, a door of opportunity was opened for me in the Lord. In verse 13, Yet my spirit could not rest, relax, or get relief because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I, I took leave of them and departed to, to Macedonia. Now Paul had this opportunity to, to teach, to preach to a, 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 a city, a full city. They, they had given him permission. The Lord had opened the door for him. And, 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 it was, and that, that group of people was willing to listen. But Titus, his disciple, wasn't there. And his spirit told him to depart to, depart to Macedonia. Now, was it sentiment that stopped him from, from teaching? No, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't sentiment. See, Paul taught and trained Titus. He knew that by teaching Titus, that would double his ministry, his ministry's ability to reach others who would later, who, who would later reach, the, reach the city of Trios. So by, by, by investing in the one, he, was gonna, he would be able to double his ministry and then Titus would go, and, and Titus would have disciples. So, so, so that's the, but that's that's the that was that's an example of of of, of the of, of Jesus using multiplication as opposed to to just making converts. You know, someone. You know, he wanted to he wanted to invest in someone that he was going to be able to. Not Jesus. I'm sorry. Pete, Paul. Paul was, was, was able to invest in someone who he was going to constantly invest in and stick with and get that quality of a, of a quality disciple. Another example was found in Acts 8. Philip and the Ethiopian Enoch demonstrated the importance of investing in the right kind of person, the right kind of person, one of vision and discipline, totally committed to Jesus Christ, willing to pay any price to fulfill, to fulfill in his life the will of God. And you can read about that in Acts chapter 8. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 to 3, uh, that's 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 to 3. And it reads, I warn and counsel the elders among you, the pastors and spiritual guides of the church, as a fellow elder and as an eyewitness, 
called to testify of the sufferings of Christ as well as share in glory the honor and splendor that it is to be revealed disclosed or unfolded tend which is nurture, guard, guide and fold tend the flock of God that is that is your responsibility not by cohesion or constraint but, wi but willingly not dishonorably motivated by the advantages and profits belonging to the office but eagerly and cheerfully not de domineering as arrogant, dictatorial, or overbearing persons over those you are, over those in your charge, but being it, being an example, examples, and models of of Christian living to the flock, which is the congregation. See, so 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 that that's that's Peter. And what he's do, doing is ex explaining, you know, the 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 attachment that that a person, that the attitude that a person should have as he goes into discipleship, you know, and uh, and 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 he was he was he was warning the, the council of the elders. You know, as fellow as a, as a fellow elder and an eyewitness, you know, and he, and he wanted to wanted them to tend them and nurture them, and and just and that would and, and that in the in the meantime, what that was also doing was that was being an example. He was he was he was being an example to the people that to the uh, converts. That, that that they were discipling, or how how they were to disciple, you know, and not looking down on people, you know, not with arrogance, not trying to for a profit, you know, not 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 trying to make money on them, you know, but for for the love of them, for the reason that for the thing, you know, using Jesus Christ as as as, as an example for of, of why you're doing it, you know. Uh, Personal discipleship or spiritual parenting is not promoted and demonstrated by the leadership in many churches. But as we can see in, in, in 1 Peter 5, 1 to 3, that it is, that it's, as we can see in, in Peter, first uh, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, as we can see there that, it, that, that, it, that there is a love, that there is a love that Jesus had, you know, and, and that through that love, you know, you're, through your love, you're, 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 be, you're being an example of how they should treat their disciples, you know, and, and, we're, and, we're, and we're teaching everyone to love and, and, and to disciple. Leaders are told what to do, but leaders can't realistically expect followers to imitate what, what they themselves are not demonstrating. So you see, you could be told what to do by a leader, but if that leader is not demonstrating it, you know, not demonstrating that love, not demonstrating that, um, that tenderness, then then more than likely, well, well, what it's saying is, is, is that you're not going to, that, that, that you're not going to do it, that the disciple, that the disciple himself is not, not going to do it also. The word says, yet as lording over, yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, 
but proving, but proving to be examples to the flock. So just uh, just be an example, and and your sons, you know, your converts will follow you. I mean, I, I just I just can't emphasize that 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 the the importance of that, you know, because it's by our love and that the love that we show that each other, that others look at us and want to become part of what we're doing, you know, and, and that. So that's that's that, that's the key, and it's also the key to a, to a quality to a quality discipleship, you know, a quality relationship. Both the command to witness and the command to make disciples were both given to the church at large, not just to those who were leaders at the time. Just like I said, because because you 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 are a leader, you know, just being a leader is not going to make someone follow you. You know, just uh, it, 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 it's how you lead. Matthew and Matthew uh, twenty eight. Matthew 28, 18, 18 to 20, with other verses, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, all authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Then he told them to go then and make, this, verse 19 he said, go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 20 it says, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion to the very close consummation of age. Amen. And then in, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it reads, But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends, to the very bounds of the earth. See, and this power isn't for a baby Christian. You know, it, 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 it's the meat. It's the meat of the word. The gospel is not the milk. Know you are in Christ. Know who, know who you are in Christ. You know. Know that you that that you can't lose your righteousness. That it can't be lost. Know that all sin is forgiven. And that in in that are equal. To, uh, you know, give you have you have the power of, of of an adult Christian. Now, how does a typical new believer acquire spiritual understanding? Okay, just as a child would tend to adopt the values and convictions of his family and peers. If a new believer is not instructed otherwise, he will typically assume the values and convictions of 
of, of, of the, the church group that he associates with during the formative period of his new spiritual life. So, so he needs to be taught that he, has, he needs to, to study the Bible to know, to know uh, God's will for him. You know, he needs to be instructed, he needs to be, and that's what discipleship is, you know, it's not just leaving the convert on his own and, and leaving him, to, leaving him l like a baby being born and leaving that baby by itself and saying, okay, you're born, you know, go ahead and get you something to eat. You know, it, 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 do, it doesn't work like that. Let's say that a new, new that a new Christian a new convert is brought into the fellowship, into fellowship with a group. We would rightly expect him to quickly begin to, to challenge the new values and, and convictions. The convert is either going to adopt the new v values and conviction or he will become uncomfortable you become so uncomfortable that he will seek a more friendly and less intrusive environment. But what happens if there is not such a group of relatively mature disciples who will take the new believer under, under their wings? That, that, that believer, that, that convert doesn't learn God's principles the principles of, 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 of God, the principles that Jesus would have them live by, where they, where, where they would grow. But typically the new believer will be introduced into, into a congregation where he is often assumed that sitting under the preaching of the word will be sufficient to lead the new believer into a spiritually mature walk. See, and uh, that they, and, 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 and just, and, that, and, and that's what we do, that's what the modern church does. They make converts and then, then they, they tell them, well, come to church and listen to the word. Come to church and listen to the word. And, and that's good, but what they really need is they need, they need, they need to, to follow the, a, a spiritually mature, you know, they, they need a spiritually mature walk, so they need to follow someone. They need an example. Okay. Hopefully the negative traits observed in the congregation do not distort the new believer's understanding. You know, because he, what, what he observes, what he observes happening, you know, have the, he, he have a tendency to, uh, to imitate it himself. Now, is that realistic? You know, will he, well, we believe it is, it, is, it is safe to say that most new, new converts will be impacted more by what they see other believers do than what they hear them say or preach. If a particular congregation is thought to be spiritually mature, then it would be realistic to, to, to reason that the combination of hearing biblical truth from a pastor or teacher together with seeing biblical spirituality from the congregation would be a tremendous help to the healthy development, the healthy spiritual growth of each new convert. Leaders need to realistically evaluate the spiritual health of their congregation, asking themselves, do we want believers or new converts 
to become like the typical member of this congregation? If the answer is no, then arrangements need to be put in place to impact or change biblical values to the, to the new converts. We would not expect the new convert, the new believer, to understand much about the Christian walk without discipleship and Bible study. Ask them questions. It is only natural for new converts to be mainly concerned with doing the right things, which would indicate that their focus is on external behavior or the law, not the meat of the, the not the meat of the word. A new believer should be able to make the assumption that if he, be, if he behaves like older Christians, then logically he'll be having, he'll be, he'll be behaving in an acceptable biblical fashion, since those older Christians are obviously styled, style their behavior on, on biblical patterns, or Jesus' example, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not the case all the time. You know, uh, it, unfortunately, the, the answer is no. Many older believers have adapted their behavior, have adapted their behavior from previous uh, Christians who who are similar, who similarly assume to be spiritually correct, but they didn't research, they didn't study, you know, and f on their own, and they were just told what, what they were supposed to do, and, and, and they obeyed it themselves, for themselves. And so another generation follows the previous generation unknowing many Christian or church leaders are, are giving their approval of this natural human process but not ensuring that each convert is personally helped through that formative, that formative and critical period of the Christian walk. While it is totally natural for a new believer to begin the Christian walk focusing on external behavior, we believe it is God's purpose for these believers to quickly begin to focus on living by biblical principles, using Jesus as, the, as, as an example. The typical Christian our new convert will not transition from focusing on external behavior to focusing on bibli biblical principles unless the discipler is willing to put the time and energy into helping him understand God's purpose, God's purposes and his process for producing spiritual growth, which is imitating Jesus, our example. You know, he has to. Now the typical new believer, new convert, understands the foundation, the foundational doctor, doc, doctrine of salvation by grace through Christ. Now he wants or needs to build that truth, build on that truth but isn't quite sure how to go about it. It is reasonable to simply give him a Bible. Is it reasonable 
to simply just give him a Bible and expect him to effectively grow in spiritual maturity. It is possible. But we think, but, but we think it is an, ex an exception, an exception to the rule. Just because some new converts, you know, and with, an example would be the, 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 thief, the thief on the cross, or the centurion soldier do seem to d did seem to display spiritual growth with little individual uh, monitoring a false impression is given that we that that we can that we can apply this to the majority of converts We are tempted to ask, why can't more converts grow like that? Isn't it also true that in a secular world, there, there are those who excel without much help from others? And that is true. You know, we do have, we do have people in the secular world that, 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 that are able to do things through others. Uh, for instance, you know, an example would be, you know, a person given an auto, auto repair manual. And if you gave that auto repair manual to a hundred people who had no prior experience working on cars, a few would manage, but with a lot of difficulty. Well, with difficulty, but they would, they would eventually figure things out. And, you know, out of that hundred, you know, an estimate would be about, a realistic estimate would be about 10 to 15 would be able to figure it out. But the majority would become frustrated, decide that repairing cars is boring work and not really worth all the hassle, and they would quit. Well, most, well, most converts left on their own react, reach the same conclusion regarding the Christian life, you know. Which would you prefer, to be given an auto, an auto repair manual to learn on your own, or to have someone take the time and personally tutor you and answer your questions? And then in doing that, instruct you, you know, and show you where to find the answers, you know, uh, how to find the answers. What God, what God's word says, and where God and where Jesus and His ministry answered the questions, but using Jesus as that example, you know, the same would be true about about building a house. You know, if if you were instructed to build a house, and you were just given the blueprints and a manual, you know, you wouldn't be able to, you know very few people would, 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 would be able to do it, would, would be a, a success in doing it. So does the Holy Spirit not expect older Christians to be available for his use in the process of spiritual parenting? When he chooses him to witness to an unbeliever, so if, if the Holy Spirit was to choose you to witness to an unbeliever, you know, as an experienced Christian, would you be able to do it? If someone would take the time to clearly explain the... F if someone would take time to explain clearly the following five important concepts that every believer at the very beginning of their spiritual walk it would greatly help to accelerate the convert's spiritual growth and help minimize the convert's uh, frustration you know because it is it, it can become frustrating you know trying to trying to do make that walk on your own And uh, and the first and, and the first 
concept would be as your savior Jesus wants you to know that all your sins have been forgiven and you have been and you now have eternal life okay the second one as your Lord Jesus wants you to know that you have been bought with a price you are no longer your own note this could be threatening if it were not for the abs if it were not for the absolute truth that God loves you and will always do what is in your best interest okay the third one is you are very special to God you are very special and God has a marvelous unique design for your entire life and he wants to manage your plan his plan he wants to manage his plan for you and then the fourth one is God wants you to know that the Holy Spirit alone is capable of guiding you and revealing God's plan for you so you know what you want to know you, you know that that you have a discipler you know someone that's discipling you but the Holy Spirit alone and, and, that, and that discipler should instruct you that the Holy Spirit through your study through your reading the Bible also that the Holy Spirit will lead you and let you know you know and, and, you, and you can tell from that still small voice if something is, is, is wrong with, with, what, with, what, with what you're doing you know if, if, it's against, if it's against the flow of the Bible and in, in, the, in the fifth one God wants you to know that the Holy Spirit will train you to recognize follow and obey his guidance okay we have heard believers proclaim I would like to be used by the Lord to help others believers grow spiritually but I don't know what to teach you know uh, this this teaching is designed to help address help address that that need in discipleship the goal is that every church would have a core group of faithful believers who have been trained and equipped as disciples who are available to assure that every believer has the opportunity to be personally discipled okay our new creation fellowship website dot com our website visit our website as you as, as you are here and uh, our new creation it's our new creation fellowship dot com or dot org and, and, and you get receive additional resources to assist you with with the the um, to us to assist you with with personal dis with, with 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 being personally discipled okay okay the, the discipleship study to work list checklist uh, the generally accepted definition of discipleship is distorted Generally speaking, in the, in, in the church community, the term discipleship has become anonymous with, anonymous with teaching. Thus, anyone who teaches is thought by many to be fulfilling the mandate of making disciples. But biblical discipleship carries the thought of a deeper interaction between the discipler and the convert being discipled than simply just teaching. While teaching is a critical component of discipleship, of the discipleship process, discipleship needs to contain many other essential components as well. 
the typical practice of teaching requires little or no interaction since many times it's one person who is the teacher and he spends the entire ses session talking while others listen. Converts, converts spend the entire session listening. We would not want to imply that there's always that there always has to be dialogue between the, 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 the speaker and the listeners. But for a convert to become a mature disciple, at some point the disciple or convert must be allowed to express and discuss his, his, his unique feelings, his unique desires, his aspirations, and discuss his biblical understanding of of what of of the spiritual change that he's gone through by by accepting Christ you know uh, exactly what 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 he should do how where his how his steps are numbered you know he he needs he, he needs he needs to, to to get a feeling for that okay discipleship needs to be redefined to include the theory of being a parent a parenting spirit you know and the parenting spirit again is not so much just leaving the convert alone but they're actually taking the convert under your wing and 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 and, and, and having a re relationship showing him through 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 your actions how what what what, what needs to be done The Apostle Paul example of biblical discipleship should be compared with the current pattern of discipling most modern churches practice today. Okay. From then the end, the to disciple, many people simultaneously generally is considered the method of choice. Personal one-on-one -on -one discipleship appears to be overly time-consuming, energy-consuming, and inefficient. The concept we want to demonstrate in is the Bible method of multiplication. Is the Bible method of multiplication? It must. It is much more productive over the long haul than than the one-on-one. -on -one discipleship. This is very important because it's short-term ineffectiveness because of its short-term okay because of its short-term early ineffectiveness I left out an important word there multiple uh, has led many to believe the illusion that multiplication is not the best method. To be honest, many church leaders, leaders measure success by numbers. I believe this is one of the most, one of the reasons there is such an emphasis on attendance numbers to measure the success of, of events and activities in church, in, 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 in modern church community. You know, people people assume that because the numbers are great. Okay, people assume that because the numbers are great, that what's being taught is is right, and that's not that's not necessarily the the uh, that's not necessarily the, the, the <laughs> what God means. You know, uh, there is an there is an attempt to develop teachers rather than disciples. That's, that's number three. But, and what we're going to do is I'm 
I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here and what, we'll, what I'll do is I'll start next week with number starting with with number three again my name is Pastor Clarence Powell you know I just I, I thank the Holy Spirit and I praise God for the, the lesson that he's given me and that I will sign off for tonight and I'll see you and I'll, I'll be back with you next week.